Hello, in this video we're going to talk about penicillins, the antibiotic, which was first discovered by a guy called Alexander Fleming in 1928, but it did not become widely available until the 1940s. The penicillins are closely related compounds comprising a beta-lactam ring, a five-membered theozolidine ring, and a side chain. The ring structures are essential for antibacterial activity, and the side chain determines the spectrum and pharmacological properties. Most penicillins in current use are semi-synthetic derivatives of 6-amino penicillic acid. Penicillins inhibit bacterial cell wall synthesis and thus are bactericidal, meaning that they kill bacteria. So what is the classification of penicillins? Well, first of all, remember that penicillins are beta-lactam antibiotics because they have the beta-lactam ring. But there are also other antibiotics that also have a beta-lactam ring in their molecular structure. These are your cephalosporins or cephalosporins, some people say, monobactams, and carbapenems. Specifically talking about penicillins, penicillins itself can be classified into six big groups. Group one are your benzyl penicillins, and it's a long-acting parenteral form. Group 6 are your orally absorbed penicillins, such as phenoxymethyl penicillin. Group 3 are your anti-staphylococcal penicillins, such as your flucloxacillins. Group 4 are your extended spectrum penicillins, such as amoxicillin. Group 5 have uh, anti-pseudomonal properties, your anti-pseudomonal penicillin, such as pepricillin. And group 6, beta-lactamase-resistant penicillins. So how do penicillins work? Well, penicillins inhibit cell wall synthesis of bacteria, so bacterial cell wall synthesis. And they do this by binding to what's called penicillin binding proteins, or PBPs. Now, PBPs are really important in cell wall synthesis. And so when you have a penicillin, as shown in this diagram, penicillin essentially latches on to the PBPs, the penicillin binding proteins, and inhibit what's called the transpeptidation of peptidoglycans. And so, therefore, inhibit cell wall synthesis, causing an unstable cell wall, leading to bacterial death. Now, penicillins and other antibiotics are very glamorous because they really inhibit bacteria, they kill bacteria when people are sick. However, bacteria are also very glamorous and very smart because they have certain enzymes and properties that actually allow them to resist certain antibiotics such as penicillins. And bacteria may become resistant to penicillins through a number of mechanisms. First of all, um, through the destruction of the actual antibiotics by enzymes called beta-lactamases. This is the most commonest way bacteria um, inhibit, essentially, penicillin function. Other forms of resistance to antibiotics, such as penicillin, includes the failure of penicillin to actually penetrate the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. Bacteria can uh, have pumps that essentially push out the antibiotic outside uh, the bacteria, specifically uh, through specifically in gram-negative bacteria. And also there's low affinity binding of uh, the penicillins to target penicillin binding proteins. Some bacteria may display more than one resistant mechanism, such as in MRSA. Let's talk a bit more about beta-lactamase. Now, as mentioned, beta-lactamases are enzymes that bind covalently to the beta-lactam ring of antibiotics, and they hydrolyze it and make the antibiotics in ineffective, and so the bacteria survives. And this is one way bacteria develop resistance, because without an effective beta-lactam antibiotic, such as penicillin, the bacteria survive. Now, there's this thing called beta-lactamase inhibitors, that actually stop beta-lactamase and therefore restore the antibacterial properties of the beta-lactam antibiotics. There are three beta-lactamase inhibitors that are in clinical use, big ones, such as 
clavulinic acid, solbactam, and tazobactam. All are only available in combination with a beta-lactam antibiotic. So these include coamoxiclav, pepericillin with tazobactam, also known as tazacin. So where are penicillins used? Well, they're used in a lot of infections. For example, benzyl penicillin is used in infections due to group A and group B streptococci, meningitis due to strep pneumoniae, and necessaria meningitis, streptococcal and enterococcal endocarditis, neurosyphilis. Amino penicillins are used in respiratory tract infections, endocarditis, meningitis, Expend extended spectrum and anti-pseudomonal penicillins are used in infections due to resistant gram-negative bacteria. And then the phenoxymethyl penicillins are also used prophylactically to prevent recurrent rheumatic fevers, or for example, um, used to help patients who don't have a spleen because they're at an increased risk of encapsulated infections. So let's talk a bit more about the pharmacology of penicillins. Penicillins differ really markedly across the spectrum in their oral absorption. So for example, phenoxymethyl penicillins is 60% orally absorbed, whereas anti-pseudomonal penicillins, zero, and are usually uh, given parenterally, IV. They vary in their degree of protein binding, and metabolism is minimal. Uh, penicillins are rapidly excreted via renal tubular cells, and excretion may be blocked by probenicid, a medication used in gout. Dose modification is important uh, in renal failure. Finally, adverse effects and toxicity. Now, allergic reactions are common, and this includes a skin, skin rash, serum sickness, delayed hypersensitivity. Anaphylactic reactions are very rare, People often have GI upset, such as diarrhea, enterocolitis can be seen, especially with ampicillin, hematological abnormalities, such as hemolytic anemia, uh, cytopenia, such as neutropenia and thrombocytopenia can also be seen in up to 4%. Importantly, penicillins can also cause an elevation in transaminases, usually flucloxacillin, as well as mild electrolyte abnormalities, such as hypernatremia. Renal adverse complications include interstitial nephritis, and hemorrhagic cystitis. CNS complications, so central nervous system complications, include encephalopathy and even seizures, which are extremely rare, but may occur, especially if someone has renal failure or are on a prolonged dose of penicillin. So in summary, penicillin is a medication used to manage and treat a wide range of infections. It is a beta-lactam antibiotic, and there are many groups or classes of penicillins, but they essentially work by binding specifically to penicillin-binding proteins on the cell wall of bacteria, and thus inhibiting the bacterial cell wall synthesis, causing it to die. Thank you for watching.